Good morning, second graders. So we're going to start painting our snails, finally. Now you can see that this paper right here is a pretty big paper. It's a 12 by 18, so it's fairly large, much bigger than some of the other papers that we've been using up to this point. Now, we're going to start our snail the easiest way possible. I'm going to start by just making a dot. And after I make that dot, I'm going to start making a spiral going all the way around. Now, I don't want the spiral to be too tight. I don't want it to draw too many circles going around. I want it to be fairly big because you have to remember your snail is actually going to have a little living creature that's going to be able to go inside, so these walls have to be fairly big. When you get to about the middle right here, that's where you're going to stop. You don't want to bring this down here. You want to stop somewhere right here in the middle and then close up your little shell. There we go. That's a good little place to stop where it's right here. Then after that, I'm going to start making my little snail body. We know that he has a little sluggy bottom, so I'm just going to draw some little wavy lines down here, give him a little tail, and have that going back up to the little snail shell. And then he's going to have a head. The head can be up, down, around. He can even be looking backwards if you want to. But typically, I just try to make a little curve that comes up here. See, starting from the shell, I have it come up, and then it's going to go back down here to the bottom. So that's fairly good. Now I'm going to draw the upper tentacles because of these little upper tentacles right here, fairly long, and then they're going to have the eyes out here. If you want to get kind of cartoonish with it, you can do some little cartoonish eyes here. If you want to, you can draw the lower tentacles. Now, if you don't want to, you can just draw a little happy face right here or a sad face or however you want to make your snail feel. But the tentacles are just small little tentacles down here to help the snail get things into its mouth. I'm just going to put them over here. They almost look like little arms. And that's fairly good. Now, you don't have to put all the details in the shell or any circles on the body today because all that we we'll really want is just the snail. And of course, we want a nice little ground line. And the ground line can be something as simple as there, done. So now I've got my snail and now I've got the ground. Now, a couple of scholars have been asking about doing things like putting more snails in here, making the snail, the snail a little bit smaller, putting it on some other kind of a background. That's all okay. Just remember, some of the things that you choose to do might make this project a little harder to do. So for example, I think I'll turn this little one around, and I think this time I'll do something like uh, this, a dot here, and let's have this snail get a lot, 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 lot bigger here. Oops, that's life. And then right here, I think I'll go ahead and have my snail looking down. So I'll have him or her kind of looking down here. And I'll have the eyes even coming down like this, like he's looking down. Maybe make them a little larger there. There we go. And maybe I'll still have him happy. There we go. And then down here, I think I'll draw, let's see, how about uh, a dot. And this time I'll draw a smaller snail up here, maybe looking up like this. And maybe really happy like this. So there we go. And that's nice and cute and adorable. And then after that, I think I want to make them on maybe different pieces of fruit or maybe even the same fruit. Maybe I'll make it like on a giant orange. So something like this. And I'll even put like a little whatever here to show that that's a little orange or tomato or something. And there, I'm done. Now, I always think it's a good idea to look at a real picture of a snail. If you need help making a snail, take a look at a real photograph. You can always find one on Google. You can find one on my blend site. And after you do these two drawings, pick which one you like. In fact, before you even turn this over, I would have probably checked the first one to make sure it looks the way you like it, compare it with the real snail, make sure everything's good. Now, when you're done, when you figure out what your best side is going to be, that's the one we're going to paint. And we're going to start by painting just the sky, and we're going to paint it as a tint. Now, what's a tint? A tint is when I make a color lighter. To make any color light, all I have to do is take that color, like blue, red, yellow, green, and I'm going to mix it with white. White makes any color lighter. Now, you can see we're using tempera paints, and I'm going to put mine on the super simple way. I'm just going to put some white right on here. You can use your brush. You can put it on however you want to, but I'm going to put white on first. Why? because white's not a particularly strong color. So we're going to use that first. Now I'm going to get some water, and I'm going to start painting my sky, or my background, white. And I know you, some of you are probably thinking, well, why are you painting a white background with white paint? Well, this is how we have to start with our tint. So here I am, not being particularly careful, just wanting to get white all over the place. And then after that, I need to pick a color for my sky. It does not have to be blue. 
You can pick any color you want to. In fact, for mine, I think I'll even pick pink. I'll just put a little magenta in here. Now, if you don't put very much paint on here, let's say I just put a little dot and a dot and a dot, the less paint you have, the lighter this color is going to be. The more paint you add, the darker it's going to be. So if you want it to be a very, very light color, then use a lot of white and just a little bit of this color. Now to make it mix, I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush and I'm going to start mixing it in with my white. And you'll see what's happening to my pink. It's getting really, really light. It's getting a very, very light pink. Now I'm going to start painting this and you can see I'm getting all rough and I'm making a lot of mistakes and that's okay. I'm just trying to get as much pink in here as I can. If your paintbrush starts to stick, if it starts to feel rough, that just means you need a little bit of water to help the paint spread. Water doesn't really help the paints mix very well, but it does help the paints to move around a little bit more. So here we go. Now when I get to this point, when I've done all this, I want to remind you about texture. Texture is how something feels. Now I want my snail to be nice and bumpy and scratchy and all that kind of good stuff, but not the sky. And in the sky, you can see all these marks, all these lines all over the place. These are called brush strokes. Every time I use the brush, you're going to see I'm leaving lines behind. And sometimes they're very rough and scratchy, and I want to make them smooth. So how do I make them smooth? Well, I make all my lines going in the same direction. So I'm going to get a little bit of water, and I'm going to start moving my brush side to side. And you'll see what's happening to the paint. All the paint now is running in the same direction. So it's going to give you the illusion that it's very, very smooth. And now you can really tell the difference between this texture over here that's smooth and this, te this texture over here, which is very rough. So now get a little more water and let's fix this side up really nice and neat. Doesn't matter if you get in the snail, you can fix that later when we paint the snail. And now it looks like I am done. That's about as good as I'm going to get this. So this is how you begin your snail drawing. Make sure you have your drawing, make sure you have a ground line, and make sure you paint your background as a tint.